hey y'all welcome back to another video today i'm going to be talking about hair care and trying a new hair care line ors to treat my alopecia areata stay tuned And so now that your girl is no longer pregnant, I'm taking the initiative to take care of my natural 4C hair. Here you can see me washing and of course, conditioning my natural hair at home. Thank you hubby for the, uh, the camera works. And you can also see my alopecia areata, which at this point, um, a lot of my friends, if you follow me on Instagram, know that it's just something that I've been suffering from since 2008. And some of the things that happen to me because of alopecia areata is of course hair loss but at the site of the hair loss there is pain there's tingling and um, oftentimes I get a headache right in that spot um, I have sensitivity so I can't wear hair weaves anything that puts any tension on the spot I also use a product called topics which is high hair fibers, which are used to camouflage the spot. So a lot of times when I go to the beauty shop, they'll just cover it right up with the uh, topics. Alopecia meaning sudden hair loss and patchy spots. Immune system is basically attacking your hair follicles. And so my hair is long and it has always been able to grow long, not necessarily thick, but long. However, there is a spot in the crown of my head that um, has thinned out quite a bit over the years. And so I went to um, a beautician and um, she specialized in growing back your hair after a hair loss um, because a lot of women suffer from hair loss during pregnancy and um, she gave me a silk press and as you can see it was pretty silky but what happened after that um, I'll talk about a, a little bit later but um, it was unexpected um, so I got my ends trimmed that was basically what I went in for but then she also you know um, wanted to sell me on getting my hair um, treated to restore hair loss. Well, I made a follow-up appointment with her, and when I went to do my weekly, you know, wash day routine, I was unpleasantly surprised at what happened to my hair. Some people might say, well, it's just hair. Well, what's the big deal? The big deal is that after three big chops, I have come to the realization that I love my hair and I want it to be as much a part of me as any other part of my body. I've also come to the realization that I accept the alopecia that was a painful learning process knowing that you were going to lose your hair and not knowing to what extreme or what depth but just knowing that you, you would potentially lose your hair and once I came to that acceptance I still wanted my hair for what 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 it's worth so at no time did I think you know, going to a professional stylist who, 
quote unquote specialized in natural hair that I would um, experience what I did. So this is a picture of basically of me receiving services at the salon. Um, the assistant was shampooing me. She was so sweet. Um, shout out to her. And um, everybody loves the shampoo process. It is wonderful. It's uh, just one of those things that everybody should do to pamper themselves. Let somebody else wash your hair. What's very nice about this experience is that at no point during my service did Felicity ever mention my alopecia. It usually makes stylists, um, beauticians uncomfortable when they see the depth of my hair loss, um, but she never mentioned it, not once. I mean, she treated me like a normal person she shampooed and conditioned me she used some of the most delicious smelling products she had great conversation great customer service I just I loved my experience with Felicity some questions that may come up are what causes alopecia people don't really have a answer for that um my dermatologist said it could be hereditary um it could be stress it could be mechanical damage or chemical damage um from like a hair stylist or hair products it could be a number of things so there's no like one size fits all my mom did suffer from alopecia my sister currently suffers from it now um, there's also some things going on health wise that could contribute to alopecia but the world may never know um, what we do know is there's no cure um, there are some times where the alopecia lies dormant and the hair grows back you know you don't really know how long the hair growth pro uh, period lasts and then there's some times where the shedding starts and it doesn't stop for a while and you don't know how long that's going to last um, it can be treated but not cured During my pregnancy, my alopecia flared up significantly. I attempted to go to the beauty salon on a regular basis to get maintenance, but it was too painful. And so I had to, around the end of the first trimester, beginning of the second trimester, attempt to manage my hair on my own so as not to just completely neglect it but I did experience a lot of breakage because my hair was extremely dry um, and fragile and of course um, it was a very stressful and painful time as m many pregnant women are aware of that you go through during pregnancy aside from alopecia whether you have alopecia or not getting a deep conditioner sitting under the hairdryer for I believe 30 minutes.
with the product. And I trimmed my hair. Here I'm receiving a steam service to open up those hair follicles and allow the product to penetrate and moisturize and deep condition my hair. Um, this is an add-on service and it was not painful at all. It was actually a really good experience um, because I had had steam service once before at another salon and did get uh, burned on my scalp. So that didn't happen this time. Now some people might ask, why go through all of this when you're going to lose your hair anyway? The reason why I go to the salon is to take care of my hair that I have and to hopefully slow down the hair loss process. I have not taken any injections or any um, other hair treatments, no Rogaine, nothing like that, but I do try to keep my scalp clean. I do try to keep it moisturized. Anybody who has 4C hair knows that it can be a challenge in and of itself. With this last big chop that I did in 2017, my hair came back somewhat different in texture. Um, my roots were tangled and knotty and just nappy and it was hard to get a comb through my roots. Um, it was like pulling teeth trying to get through a wash day and I would literally be afraid of my hair afraid of getting through the tangles getting through the knots having all those fairy knots being told at different salons that I was too tender-headed feeling like I was having my brains raked out so um, when I get to the end of the video I'll explain to you um, what unexpectedly happened to my hair and how that wasn't altogether necessarily the worst thing ever. And so this was my first time going to the salon since I had my baby. At this point, he was about six or seven weeks old. And the reason why I felt the urgency to go is because I was watching my girl Deeper Than Hair TV and just wanted to make sure that I didn't have um, any breakage. So I wanted to get those ends trimmed.
Felicity was very gentle in her detangling. I can honestly say, because I'm the most tender-headed person I know, that if I was able to not flinch or make any faces while she was doing this, she was definitely gentle. Because as soon as I got into the stylist chair, um, the stylist was like, oh, you tender-headed, huh? And I was like, oh yeah, big time. turned out beautiful I mean it was straighter than straight the trim was gorgeous the curls were popping had a beautiful beautiful body and texture um, I hadn't added the topics yet however when it was time for me to wash my hair it didn't bounce back it had a much looser curl pattern. This was not altogether a terrible thing, heat damage, because as I stated before, my roots were unmanageable. So now I can comb through them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you again on the next video.